We're here today with Wharton Statistics Professor Bashor Bhattacharya to talk about some of his latest research. Bashor, thanks for being with us today. Could you first of all talk to us a little bit about, give us a brief summary of your research, what kind of question you were trying to answer? Right, so my research interests are at the intersection of statistics, probability, and combinatorics. So recently, numerous very interesting combinatorial and graph theoretic problems have emerged in statistics, mainly because of the ubiquitous presence of network data and the increasing use of graph-based methods in modern data analytics. And as a consequence, many interesting connections have emerged between modern statistical methods and classical concepts in geometry and probability. And you know, as a consequence, you can use them to solve interesting problems in statistics. Great. And tell us a little bit about, in this study, what were the key takeaways that you took away, that you took away from the study? The key takeaways of my research are basically the interplay between computational complexity, which is the time it takes to, to implement one of these methods, and its statistical performance, which is how close it is to the mathematically best procedure. It turns out that many of these graph-based methods are computationally very efficient, so they can be aptly used to solve uh, and apply in large data sets. And we have also shown that in many situations, uh, these tests have near optimal performance guarantees, which provide the theoretical justification required for using these procedures. Now, had graph-based methods, was that something that has not been used as much in the past or had been looked at with more skepticism? I mean, why is this? Right. So, so graph-based methods have been used in practice for a long time. But I think what comes out of my research is the, the answer to the question that why they work. So they were used and they were working fine before, but here is, so here we provide some theory behind why it works, giving the justification of using it in real problems. Great. And so getting to that, actually, like if I'm a business, if I'm a business person or I own a business, I mean, how can I apply this research practically in my life? Right. So one of the recent projects we're looking at is what is known as the two sample problem. So Imagine I have a situation where I want to find out whether a set of genes regulate or affect uh, the occurrence of a disease. So for example, to just illustrate, suppose I have uh, uh, 20 genes and I have the gene expression level data from 100 patients who have diabetes. And I have the same expression level data for 100 patients who are healthy. And the goal is to find out whether these 20 genes are expressed differentially. So by that, I mean that their expression levels are significantly different between these two sets of patients. And uh, our research sort of aims to provide the theoretical understanding and comparison of the different methods that are deployed to understand or answer such questions. What are some other applications for this research? Right. So another interesting application of our work is in natural language processing, mainly in problems which try to understand similarity between words. So imagine the word color, which can be spelt in two ways, one with the letter U, one without the letter U, and they are the same words. But the words, for instance, wolf and fox are both animals, but they are very different words. So in this case, in spite of the amount of data we have, the support size, which is basically the collection of all words, is far larger than the, than the data set itself. So one of our methods is uh, what we are studying can be used to analyze such problems as well. Which I would think would be pretty interesting to businesses nowadays just because so many people are like taking social media posts right. and things like that right. and trying to get data about customers that right. way. Right, right, perfectly, yeah, 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 sure. And so what's next for this research? Right, so currently I'm trying to understand or, or analyze uh, the methods for analyzing data in what is known as the high dimensional setting, where you have, say, 10,000 genes and only a few hundred patients, and uh, you want to find out something about how the genes affect the disease or the patients. And for these cases, different new techniques are required, and I'm trying to understand the theoretical uh, the, uh, background of these results and how these can be used to find to get new methods and new algorithms. Great, Bashar, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, thank you.